Hey everyone, it's Stephanie again, and you are tuned in to the review of Married at First Sight, Season 7, Episode 16. So, shout out to everyone who made it through this season. Like, <laughs> this season was so difficult to get through. It was really like an army crawl to get through. So, if I have a party, I mean, I envisioned having a party and just inviting all of you so we can just talk about this season and how long it is. And I'm thinking about doing something for the next season, so I will keep you guys tuned because I definitely want to have an event and I definitely want to meet you guys. And I'm also working on trying to get on the show. So I've seen a lot of conversation about that and I've been working on that. It's just really hard to get into. Um, I really don't know what you know how to really do that I've reached out to some people because um, I thought why not I mean I'm already kind of doing it um, so if you guys know let me know because I would be open to kind of meeting someone or, or open to some dialogue where we can kind of do that because I feel like the show needs to shake it up a little bit when it first started it had a certain uh, group of experts and then you know it's changed over the years and I think it would be a good time to kind of add a little spice again maybe add a different you know demographic or add a you know younger person or you know they've had they have pastor cal i think he's amazing they've had dr jessica she's great dr pepper is you know she's the old g she's been there since season one but i would love to have like a new fresh demographic um that could represent for relationships so if you guys know anything like that please feel free to let me know and if i do have an event i'm in south florida then i will let you guys know and maybe some of you guys i can meet so that's that um jumping into this episode you know, I don't know. I mean, they all stayed together. Um, so let's just put that out there. We know that by now. Um, Bobby proposed. I kind of knew. So now as I watch the show, I kind of watch it from like a production standpoint. Like they, you know, say the certain things and they kind of do these leading questions and things are super dramatic. And I feel like, you know, all season long, we've obviously noticed that Danielle has not really shared any emotions and you know, they really harped on that in the two hour <laughs> finale about her not really sharing her emotions. So I felt like when she was going to share it was on decision day. Like I kind of knew she would say that, you know, I was happy she did. But, you know, I, I still am going to stand by the fact that I thought that she didn't have to say she loved him. Maybe she didn't at the beginning or, you know, eight weeks is really not that long of a time. I just feel like, you know, I was hoping that she would be just a little more. Uh, open with her emotions because people want that people desire that you know it's an indication of if the relationship or the chemistry is moving forward and if people are on the same page so I still think that you know she she suffers with the inadequacy to be able to do that even with saying you know I'm so in love with you like that was nice but I feel like because we've been so thirsty for her to say anything it was like huge one thing I will say because this episode encompassed them talking to their family members and friends and all these people about decision day and you know their last few moments together you know we t we saw Bobby talk to his sister about their relationship and his sister which is why I love the family component and I hope they bring a little more of that back in the next season his sister kind of shed some light on who Bobby is in relationships so Bobby is like the giver he's almost the over giver and as his sister She's saying, you know, you doing what you used to do wouldn't have worked out with those other women and it would have gotten old. And so I wonder, you know, will it get old with Danielle? Because if we flip to her having a conversation with, I forgot who she talked to, but why she wanted to be with Bobby, I don't know if this was in the confessional or if this was talking to someone, but because I was like, my mouth fell open when she said her reasons for wanting to be with him, which she mentioned all the things he does for her like that's what she said she said you know he does all these things for me and he really loves the dogs like there was nothing in her description that said anything about him as a person earlier on in the episode and i was so like that was as if i was not already turned off i was so like bothered by that because despite her you know showing her love you know at decision day never once has she just said you know he's a really good guy or i really am beginning to care about him or you know he treats me so well it's it's like what i can what can be done for her and she you know in some ways they're matched really really well but that's concerning to me because 
if you notice during decision day when he kind of said, you know, the fostering of the dogs can be somewhat challenging, she said, oh, he's not perfect. Like, and then they cut to her saying, well, you know, I need someone who can basically get on board with something that's so important to me or I don't know. And my thing is, yes, you need someone who can get on board with something that's really important to you, something you're passionate about. But as giving as he is, if he says that that's challenging sometimes, then there is room for compromise where, okay, if you're not fought, you may not be fostering, you know, every day or every week, but maybe once a month, something that works, especially when you do none of the actual fostering, your husband actually does everything like he should even have a bigger say so considering what you signed up for, what you're so passionate about, you're not really able to maintain at all. Um, so that, you know, congrats to them. I, I do think that in a lot of ways they're matched well. I just hope that there's a, a little more reciprocity because she just seems to like enjoy this ride. And it's cool, but uh, high five to Bobby's sister, that will get old, even with her. Um, I'm happy that Bobby's happy, and I just really hope that he learns to um, stand up for himself and communicate his needs as much as she is as comfortable receiving. <laughs> So that is Bobby and Danielle, you know, congrats to them. They stayed together. He proposed, which I'd never seen before. He really wanted to seal the deal because he was so nervous because he didn't know how she felt. I knew they would stay together, but he proposed. And I thought that that was a cute way to really up the ante because they meet at the altar. Um, they meet at the altar at the beginning of the show and they get their wedding bands. But, you know, you they miss out on that beautiful, exciting engagement moment that every every woman or most women like look forward to that that you know the ring and I didn't know what was happening and you could tell she didn't know what was happening the experts were like what we didn't know what was happening um so it was really sweet to kind of see him seal the deal like that and really say I really care about you and I really want you to marry me for real not just because we met at this uh experiment so it was very cute so congrats to them hope it works out um so that's Bobby and Danielle me and Tristan, I'm going to run through them. Um, you know, I figured that they would stay together too, even though we know that they don't. Um, but I figured that that's kind of how it was going to go, considering the news got leaked throughout the season. Um, but, you know, if they, I think, would have just been honest with themselves, I don't think they would have made it. I think there was a season before this. I don't think they would have made it, you know, past the first couple of episodes. Uh, there was a season before this where a couple just did, they didn't make it on, they didn't make it early on. Um, and unfortunately, you know, that sucked and, and you were hoping for more. But I think that in the long run, it worked out for them because they weren't gonna be together and they knew that it wasn't gonna work out. So, you know, this has been a very long train wreck that we watched and you know, watching them last night, I was just, and knowing what we all know, it was just kind of like, you know, sometimes you just kind of have to uh, honor your intuition, I guess, um, or honor just the facts. I mean, I don't even think it was their intuition. It was just a very overt, uh, like, obvious, destructive c concerns and issues that kept happening. So, you know, that's me and Tristan. I hope that they find love elsewhere you know me and my husband were talking last night about how some of these because we we're talking about honeymoon island and happily ever after and how some of these people specifically they get on the show or they you know get past a certain round and they may not make it or they get on the show and it doesn't work out but then a lot of them have like bounced back and have met other people or you know have gotten married and they're really really happy so the goal is always to find love and find that person that you know nourishes you and you can build that life with if that's what you want so I, I hope that they're able to do that I hope that they're able to really work on themselves individually um, before kind of jumping into the next thing so that's me and Tristan um, last and certainly not least, uh, Dave and Amber. So Dave and Amber had me on the fence, uh, throughout this episode. Towards the end, I had made up my mind though. I figured that they would stay together, but it was just concerning because I feel like, you know, Amber probably got to a point where she was thinking, you know, why am I feeling this way? Like, why am I even still questioning the basics about this man? Um, at this point, I should know that he has mostly good feelings and she didn't know that and I feel like that's a combination of her being very insecure Which we know we've beat her up for that all, you know 
all season, but also kind of the control and manipulation that he wields. You know, even like a simple conversation about, oh, would you just want to be together? He can't answer. And I think that he likes to be in control. I think that he likes to be manipulative in that way. I don't think that he's calling it that, but I think that um, he is rooted in who he is and being right. And for those who disagree, take a look at the conversation that he had with his two friends. So he invites two of his friends who are married, by the way, and they are giving you like premium marriage advice because his thing is we keep having the same argument over and over. This is what Dave is saying. And his friends jokingly say, I've been married X amount of years or, you know, this is, that's what it is. I've had the same argument over and over. What that means is you're not really experiencing anything different. You're not experiencing something that you, you know, shouldn't be experiencing. This is kind of par for the course and they're validating, Hey, I really like her. You know, she's a good girl. She's not really the type of woman that you've dated before, which obviously has not worked out. And he can't hear that. He's basically saying no to his friends, who he's asking advice for, who he is leaning into for advice. We haven't seen his family. We can't find his family with a flashlight at high noon. I have not seen them since the wedding, but whatever. Um, he's, not, he's not even listening to them because he wants them to say what he wants to hear. That, you know, you should be on the fence about her because she is very insecure and you shouldn't be having that argument. You have these people who you trust and who really know better than you because they're they've been married longer than eight weeks and you can't hear it and you're stopping them and he's even in the confessional saying that no he doesn't think they know what they're talking about oh my god you know control issues 101 so you know it just it it confirmed what i already knew and what i already think like there are elements of dave that i like but i think that he has a lot of work to do and the problem is he doesn't know that he has to do that work because in his mind he doesn't, he's not perfect. He would never say that. And, and a lot of people would never say, I'm perfect. But a lot of your actions display differently. And so his actions display that Amber is the problem and her issues are the problem. And he, I don't think he's ever really said that he has any issues. So that is bothersome to me. They stay together. You know, I, I, I don't know. Amber, of course, wanted to stay married. That didn't surprise me. But I did like that she was finding out if she wanted to be married for herself and if this would be good for her. Like, if you give Amber long enough, she's actually, she she has more than we give her credit for. And I like that she thought of, of like, okay, what do I want? Is this gonna make sense for me? Because I think that will continue on as they really get to know each other beyond the cameras and she will make a decision that is smart for her and not just off of the desperation because that will get old quick too. Uh, Dave, you know, he says he wants to stay married too. Um, they have great potential because I saw that a few episodes ago when they kind of just got over both of their issues and they got over themselves and they just enjoyed each other in the moment and gave each other a little grace, gave each other room to just be and not take things so seriously and, you know, recognize these recurring themes in each other's personalities and like gave room for that. I saw that like a beautiful episode with them they have the potential you know and they're not these young kids they're like 36 and 37 they're not 20 somethings no shade to the 20 somethings but you you know your 30s are a whole different ball game you really really do know yourself a lot better even while you continue to evolve so they have the room um they just kind of need to grow together and allow each other to be and not you know dave stop being so judgmental take off your judge cloak put the gavel down. Amber needs to get strong within herself so that her insecurities aren't just ruining the relationship and she's not projecting all these things onto him and makes things a bigger deal. And they will be fine. So I really hope they find their footing. Um, otherwise, it won't be long term. But I am excited for them because they do have potential and I'm hopeful for love. So that is Dave and Amber. Um, Thank you guys for like rocking out with me this whole season. I mean, it was, I mean, it was, I feel like we deserve something. I feel like we deserve something for the two hours uh, of a finale. It really <laughs> didn't even have to be two hours. But, um, you know, it was really good talking to you guys. I love interacting with you guys. I feel like I have some friends that I just never met before. So I will be reviewing one of the shows for sure which is happily ever after. Um, I'm not sure about Honeymoon Island.
And because I just got to get a feel for it. Like some part of it gives me a little, uh, I don't know. I'm not going to judge it just yet. So we'll see. I'm definitely going to watch the first episode and then I may or may not review it, but you'll definitely see me. And then of course I'll be back for, uh, I think it's Philadelphia next season and that starts in January. So they're kind of like ramping these, these out. I feel like they used to wait, you know, six months or something and now they're kind of like really maximizing the franchise so either way you will see me soon and um don't forget to subscribe comment like put the notification bar up because or the notification bell um because i will be sharing some stuff as we move along to the next season of stuff so hope you guys have a great great night and everyone enjoy the rest of your week